Hey guys and welcome to the show. So in today's series I'm going to be showing you how you can create the Google Chrome T-Rex game. It's really quite straightforward. We're going to be using GameX Studio 2. If you're new to this channel and don't know what GameX Studio 2 is, please check in the description. There is a link that you can follow to download this application completely for free so you can follow along with this video series. In today's video we're going to be focusing on the controls of the dinosaur as well as the platform mechanics of his infinite running world. So without further ado, let's jump straight into the code and let's create ourselves a T-Rex infinite runner. So straight off the bat, there's nothing really exciting going on with the very start of the project. What I've done is I've imported some sprites and created some animations for our dinosaur. We have the run animation over here, we click play at five frames per second, stomping his little dino feet. We've got the dino duck. So this is what's gonna happen if the user presses the down uh, key and he can run, there we go, stomp, 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 stomp. We have the dino stand, which we're gonna be using for jumping, and we've got this sprite block to represent the block that he will be essentially standing on in the platform world. So I think this block is a good starting point. Let's go to objects, let's create an object called OBJ block, and it is going to have a sprite block, just like that. I'm gonna head over to our room, which at this point is empty, it's just a 720p kind of room and I'm going to take that block and put it around here. That looks like a good spot. So our dinosaur is going to be interacting with this block. Now in this game, it's an infinite runner. The world around our character, our player is going to be generating. Our player isn't actually moving backwards or forwards. He is staying in place and the world around him is moving towards him. That's the way this works. So let's close that room and let's go ahead and create another object. This one's going to be object dino. We can give him the sprite of the dino stand. There we go. Just so that when we place him in our game world, we can see where he should be standing on this block on start. So let's go ahead and initialize a couple of variables that will aid this dinosaur in interacting with his surroundings. I'm going to go add event, create. In here, I'm going to say grav equals seven. So that's the gravity. The JSPD jump speed is going to be 50. The vertical speed at this point is zero. Jumping is false. He's not jumping. He's not falling. He's not ducking. So all of these are set to false. His terminal velocity is going to be set to 50. So this is how many pixels per step he can fall as a maximum. And once we've got that, to simplify things, when I add code to our step event, which executes every game step, I'm going to make use of some scripts to clean things up a bit. If you followed along in my platform series, you will um, notice that some of these scripts are quite familiar. We're gonna have an SCR detect key. We're gonna have an SCR ground check. We're gonna have an SCR jump check. We have an SCR collision check, and lastly, an SCR set sprite. Very good. Now, before we go into creating these scripts, let's head back over to our room and place the dinosaur right above that block. So he's going to be jumping around over here. Picture him here like this: jump, 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 and the obstacles are going to be coming from the right to the left towards him and he's going to have to uh, avoid them. Simple as that. Okay, so the first script is called SCR detect key. It's basically just going to be listening for when the user presses one of the keys on the keyboard. The keys that we're interested in are the spacebar, the up arrow, that's going to be the alternative jump, and the duck key, which is going to be the down key. So scripts, create script. Let's give it a name, SCR detect key. I'm going to say jump key equals keyboard check pressed VK space. So that's checking if the space bar is pressed. Then we're going to have a jump key alternative. Keyboard check pressed and the key is going to be VK up. Next is the duck key, which is going to be keyboard, check, pressed, VK, down. Simple as that, that's all we have to put in the script. So I'm going to save that. Let's go back up. What's next? The ground check. 
Notice that this is now being highlighted a different color now that the script is in existence. Ground check, script, create script, paste the name ground check. So this we're gonna to use to change our state. If we're colliding with that object block over here in the room, then we're touching the ground, so our vertical speed is gonna be zero. We're not jumping, so we're gonna set that variable to false, and we're not falling, so we set that to false too. And also, if we're not pressing the duck key, then I wanna make sure that ducking is also false. This will also be a time to listen for the jump key being pressed, because this is the only time that the user can jump is if they are on solid ground. Otherwise, if they're not colliding with the solid ground, then we're in the air, so we want to slowly bring the dinosaur to a stop and bring him back to the ground using gravity. I've noticed also on the Google Chrome game, if you press the ducking key while the dinosaur is in the air, he falls towards the ground a lot faster. This is to be used as like a strategy to jump over some of the faster obstacles that come along later in the game. So firstly, let's see if the user is pressing the duck key. If so, Ducking is set to true, uh, jumping is set to false, and falling is set to true. All right, so straight off the bat, if you're pushing the duck key, chances are you're ducking and you might be falling. If place meeting, the X coordinate of the dinosaur, the Y coordinate of the dinosaur plus one, so it's one pixel down from the dinosaur's legs, is colliding with object block, This means we're touching the ground. Easy. V speed is zero. Jumping is now false. Falling is now false. We're not jumping or falling, we're touching the ground. And if we're not pressing the duck key, then ducking is also false. How's about we detect if uh, the player wants to jump? This is a good time. He's touching the ground, it's more than possible for him to jump. So, if he's pressing the jump key, or he's pressing the jump key alternative, then he can jump. But we also make sure that he's not pressing the duck key at the same time. That's just going to look silly. So, so long as he's pressing a allocated jump key, and not the duck key, we can say jumping is true, and the vertical speed of the dinosaur is now equal to the negative jump speed of the dinosaur. So in this case, that's going to be negative 50. That's his speed in the negative direction, therefore up. Very good. Next, let's put in an else. What happens if we're not touching the ground? Well, if we also happen to be ducking while not touching the ground, I'm going to say the V speed plus equals the gravity of the game world times four. So he's going to fall to the ground four times faster they're normal if the player presses the duck key while they're in the air. If they're not ducking, then we want to say, well, bring the dinosaur back to the ground at gravity pixels per step. However, I want to make sure that he doesn't accelerate too rapidly. It's going to look a little strange. Let's check his vertical speed is less than the turn velocity. And if so, then we'll increase his vertical speed by gravity, and he'll only accelerate to 50 pixels per step, maximum. If the V speed is equal to one, then it actually means that we're falling. I'm gonna put down the sign function here to make sure that we're ignoring the sign of VSPD, because if we're moving up, it's gonna be going negative, and if we're coming down towards the ground, it's gonna be increasing by one. And just like that, we have the ground check. Very cool stuff. Next, let's go ahead and create the jump check, I believe it was. New script, jump check. If we're jumping, if the vertical speed is less than zero, it's gonna mean that we're still gaining altitude. So jumping is still true. I'm gonna wrap this in some curlies so I can make use of an else nicely. Otherwise, we're falling. And if we're falling, well, jumping is false. And falling, falling's true. Now let's go back to our dinosaur and let's create SCR collision check. So the script that prevents the dinosaur from going inside of our object block because that'll create some problems. So here I'm gonna say, well, if place meeting our X and Y of our dinosaur, but not just the Y, if our current Y plus 
plus the potential next position of our dinosaur on the y axis is you know meeting the block so while we're not exactly at the edge of the block I want to say the Y corner of the dinosaur needs to move right up to the edge of the, blo of the block. And then I can set my V speed to zero. We don't need to move in the vertical axis anymore. And our position is going to equal V speed, which will either be a proper value or zero. Cool. So lastly, if we head back to our dinosaur, we'll notice that we have to set the sprite. This will say, well, if I'm jumping, I need to show the dino stand sprite if i'm ducking show the dino duck and do the animation and if i'm running do this one so create script paste scr set sprite name if i'm jumping or i'm falling i can use the same sprite for that it's simply sprite index equals spr dino stand that's the guy i've chosen for that if we're ducking however the sprite index is going to be SPR Dino Duck and the image speed needs to be 2. If I am not jumping and I'm not falling and I'm not ducking, I want the sprite index to equal the SPR Dino Run. Uh, sprite and the image speed to be 2. Okay, cool. So let's save everything we got. Let's go back to our game world. Just make sure that our dinosaur is, you know, above this block. So he's ready to go. So let's fire this up and actually see what we've got. Whoops, we've got some errors. Oh, we're just missing an extra bracket. Right, so before we test this out, let's go back to our dinosaur. We're initializing some variables, gravity, jump speed, vertical speed, jumping, falling, ducking, terminal velocity, and we're executing each one of these scripts every step of the game. So we're detecting the key. Oh, this one just needs to be keyboard check, actually. Whether it's jumping, the jump key alternative, or the duck key. If we're touching the ground, change our various properties. If we're jumping, set some various properties. Ensure that the dinosaur isn't entering the block and lastly setting the correct sprite for our property so let's go ahead and save everything and press play so here we go there's our dinosaur there's our block that he's on and if we press the down arrow he's going to duck pretty cool stuff and if we press up he's going to jump and if we press space he's also going to jump now if he's in the air when you push down notice how quickly he will fall to the ground very quick so if there's an obstacle there's one coming you can press down. Somehow he's changing his weight to bring himself to the ground a lot sooner than usual. So one thing we can also do is make sure this object block is invisible. Simply just tick the visibility button. And if we run it again, you'll notice that our dinosaur is kind of floating around in, um, in midair, which is okay. Just like that. In future videos, we'll be making the ground kind of come towards him as well as obstacles. So it'll appear as in as if he's actually standing on some terrain. So if you found this tutorial educational helpful, please feel free to comment, rate, and subscribe. If there's anything specific about the Dino Run games you don't understand, you can leave a comment in the description and I'll let you know if we're gonna be covering it in the series. If you want us to do anything crazy at the end once we have fully replicated the Google game, please let me know also in the comments. The project files for this video so far can be found in the description. If you like what I'm doing here, please check out my Patreon campaign supporters of which get access to videos like this a day or two earlier. I really do appreciate your support. So until next time, happy coding, and I'll see you then.